What's up, Traders Edge? It's Mark Sebastian, your only option. And this is the week that was. Uh, today, we're going to look at the levels in the major indexes. We're going to take a look at the Russell 2000 and the mid cap index. Uh, we're going to talk about what's going on in the chip sector and how far it can run. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what's happening with the volatility index. Uh, all right. So let's get down to business. S&P 500, more like the S&P 5000, closing 5,026. It had a pretty strong day, up about 28 points, uh, over half a percent. The NASDAQ 100 was even stronger. Uh, it's in sky-high territory. It's all the way up uh, 1% at 437.05. Uh, now, here is what I think is really interesting. I'm going to share with you four different, uh, five different indexes. The red is the mega cap ETF, MGK. The blue, the triple Q. This is the S&P 500. This green line down here, that's the Russell 2000. And this yellow line that is unchanged since December 27th is the equal weighted index. So what does this chart tell us? This chart tells us that the rally has been incredibly concentrated only in mega names. It's only been in mega names, namely chips. I mean, the biggest companies in the world are outperforming the NASDAQ 100. That is how narrow this rally has been. It's been incredibly strong, but really tailored only to the top 25 names in the S&P. 500. If you want to know what's going on with the MAG-7, I like MGK. Now, it does have other names in it, but it is primarily those big seven names, uh, and they are off to the races, up almost 9% in about a month and a week. That is an incredible move for an ETF that carries about 90 names. That is absolutely incredible. Uh, I mean, the triple Qs, they're nothing to sneeze at, up 6.3, and the S&P up 5% in a month. Uh, that is also really, really strong. But when I look at MGK, and let's go to our regular index, and I look at the one year here, and I'm seeing an index that is very stretched. Could it make it to 300? Absolutely, it could but it has gotten really far away from the 21 day, super far away from the 50, and look at the 200 all the way down 50 points lower. This index is getting really, really stretched. So when does this end? This index is getting pulled up by NVIDIA. NVIDIA is $720. Since January 5th, NVIDIA is up over $200, an almost 50% move in a month. Now, looking at the fundamentals on NVIDIA, its PE is now approaching 100. Now, that will drop after earnings. That's a trailing 12 month. But that PE expansion is really crazy. That's the mode we're in. We're in a mode of PE expansion. Uh, names like AMD have huge PEs, 322. Arm Holdings, which had itself a heck of a week, um, doesn't have a full 12 months, but I can tell you its current forward PE is even higher than NVIDIA. Um, another name, and this is one that I'm going to have on my watch list for next week, is AMAT. Um, it had a really strong day. We're going to circle back with Applied Materials because that is one I'm going to be talking about pretty heavily in my look at the week ahead, which I'm going to send out tomorrow. All right. So... We've got this super concentrated uh, rally, and it's really being pulled up by the chip makers. And because it's not like Apple has been that strong, right? You look at Apple, Apple from the beginning of the year is essentially flat. Tesla, Tesla, it's down. Google, 
up marginally on the year. But really, it's been these three names, Meta, Microsoft. I mean, the run in Microsoft has been pretty phenomenal. It was on December 28th, on January 2nd, it closed 370. It's up 50 bucks. This is a $3 trillion company. Think about how much value has been added to Microsoft. Just an absolute incredible run. Their earnings disappointed, and now it's higher. Money is just pouring into this very concentrated area, which leads us to the IWM and the mid caps. If we're going to continue this rally, IWM, MDY, and RSP need to start being included in the rally. Yes, RSP is at an all-time high, but it really hasn't done anything since it had this major rally in uh, November, December. Um, lastly, I want to kind of look at XLE. If we're going to really make it to 5,200, which I think is in the cards for the S&P, XLE is going to move back to 90. So I'm going to talk more about this on my watch list, but I want you to know kind of where everything is right now. There is a piece of this market that is really, really stretched. And in order for the S&P to continue to rally, those probably are going to, at a certain point, stall, and the rest of the index needs to rally with it. So I really like long the other 490 names right now. Uh, I really do. How do you express something like that? You can express that with the diamonds. Yeah, the diamonds are near an all-time high, but they have not had anywhere near the rally that the S&P has had. Uh, diamonds opened the year at 377. They closed on the second. It's up about nine bucks. So it's up two and a half percent. This might be where I would go if I wanted to stay long and I wanted to rotate out of some of the strength of the S&P or rotate out of MGK because you're getting a, a really broad view of the overall market with diamonds. Believe it or not, it's a, a more diversified ETF than the SPY at this point. All right. Now, let's talk about the week that was with VIX. The VIX actually rallied on Friday and it uh, the February future expires on Wednesday morning. That's the same day as CPI. Um, we've got a really, really tight spread here, but March isn't exactly expensive. 1.7. Typically, it'd be closer to two. In fact, I think the entire curve going out to August, even September, relatively inexpensive. All right. October is an outlier. Now, October is going to be bumped because of the election, but it's an outlier. 11 contracts traded in this. So I think you're going to see October pull down a little bit. But this index, uh, the, the index futures are really depressed right now. If you're interested in hedging, and I am, um, you know, a long spy, long VIX play makes a ton of sense. I think VIX could outperform uh, on, on a rally a rally in volatility than the sell-off in SPY. So I'm looking at VIX as my solution to hedge right now. Uh, now, let's talk about a couple of trades that, that happened on Friday. We had our first big win for zero DTE February. Um, I bought the 5, the 50, 20, 50, 30, 50, 40 call butterfly. I paid a buck 20. It, I sold some at 260 and the rest I let settle Final settle for the S&P, 52, So each of those butterflies was worth $661. That's a $541 profit in uh, only a few hours. Uh, we also had some really nice winners in um, Ford. Uh, you know, Ford saw a huge volume into its earnings. We were able to play that and take really nice advantage of it. Um, I've also had a really nice win in nitro trader where i uh sold my some long ups calls that i was long versus short fedex puts versus long fedex puts i sold my ups calls for more than i paid for the entirety of my fedex puts so i'm sitting on free fdx puts through march that is absolutely phenomenal i'm in a great position where if the market does tank i'm going to make some money 
Speaking of making money, uh, next Thursday, I'm going to be showing you how you can invest in expensive companies spending as little as a thousand bucks. I want you to join me. Uh, this is a great, great presentation. I'm going to teach you how I pick the stocks I pick. And I'm going to uh, show you how I take advantage of expensive stocks using options to own them for little, really a low, low cost and control a lot of shares. Click the link in this video to sign up for next Thursday. If you sign up, I'm doing a class on spreading. Those who register will get to attend for free. All right, folks, you got questions? You want to join some of my services? Shoot us, shoot us an email, support at optionpit.com or call us 888-TRADE-01. I am Mark Sebastian. I am your only option. Have a great weekend. I'll be back with my watch list.